the Agriculture Secretary, George Eustace, who said this morning, and I'm quoting, generally speaking, what people find is that by going for some sort of value brands rather than own brands, they can actually contain their household budgets. Well, look, I came up with the downshift challenge, the double downshift challenge. I think I even trademarked it about 20 years ago, Andrew. So there is nothing wrong with the advice, but the what is wrong is the concept that the people who are on the lowest incomes, who are choosing between whether they freeze or starve, don't know that and don't do that. That's the <laughs> forgive the language. It isn't the advice. The advice is perfectly reasonable. If you're going supermarket shopping and you're buying the most expensive brands and you need to cut back, then drop down a brand level or two. But the idea that that is some panacea for the, the, the working poor and the non-working poor in this, this country who don't have enough income and that they don't know that, well, that's why it comes across as patronising and difficult. And it is a tough time at the moment. It is a difficult wrestle. I put out an article called Heat the Human, Not the Home. And I, I introduced that by saying I'm doing this in desperation. This isn't me saying you should do it. This is that there are simply people who can no longer afford to heat their homes. So we did detailed analytical research on solutions such as, you know, are you better to plug in a USB heated body warmer or are you better to put the socks on and which uses the most power and how does it work? Now, I do that because we're trying to scrape solutions, but I don't control the political levers of power that can relieve people from those problems. And when you do, it comes across as patronising. So, so, Martin, you take me straight on to the next question, which is indeed those levers of power. If by some alchemy you could be translated for 24 hours into the heart of the Treasury, is there anything ministers could do now? Could Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson come out and stand in a cornfield and hold hands and announce something now that would actually help the, the people facing the worst of these bills in the months ahead? My preferred solution would be to launch a social tariff for energy. I've always suggested this. I think it's more pressing. It would effectively be a new price cap that was specifically for those people who have never been able to take advantage of the market or who are on the lowest income that would reduce their prices for energy use. It would clearly have to be subsidised. And one of the problems I think we've come in the argument about what we do is everybody seems to think that we must link the input and the output. You, the, coming up with solutions of how you cut people's costs, you need to have something that's very similar to how we raise the money to do it. So if you want to help people on, with energy, you cut VAT. Well, VAT is quite blunt. It would cut my bills and your bills, Andrew, uh, and, and roughly in the same proportion to the, the bills it cuts of the poorest. Arguably, keep the VAT money and target the savings. Or they say a windfall tax. Again, I don't have any objection to that. But you don't necessarily need to raise the money to help people on energy out of energy. You can do it of general taxation. You can do it out of debt. You can do it out of other forms. So there's, there's a separation of the arguments I'd be keen to see. What do we need to do to help people? And I think a social tariff would be very useful, as well as putting in funds to help people. And how do we raise the money to help them are two separate debates that we need to have that I think we're conflating and we're allowing ourselves to get stuck on the how do we raise the money that means we're not coming up with the solutions and how we help people. The honest truth is how we help people is one way or another we need to either take less cash out of their pockets or put more cash in their pockets. And that isn't rocket science. The question is how do we pay for it? 